There's no magic to aseptic processing, but we do need to consider the unexpected. And the unexpected subject for this week is interventions. Hello, hope you're doing okay. Tim Sandal back with another video. And today's subject is about interventions. And this is a reminder about the seriousness of interventions into aseptic filling areas. And also to remind ourselves about the risks. So let's begin the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I'd like to start with just uh, reminding everyone about first air. So first air is the principle of never breaking first air or reaching overexposed product components or the filling line. And this is because first air is the last defense against contamination getting into the vial. And first air is defined as the um, undisturbed air coming directly from HEPA filtration sources like unidirectional airflow. And it's important to understand that many things can disrupt first air and we need to avoid the airflow from becoming blocked or from things that might generate particulates due to um, their design or also anything that would create undue turbulence. And the intervention is one thing that can disrupt first air. And we can show first air through things like smoke studies as an example on the screen there and it's important that tasks are performed correctly and that they're executed in a particular way and if procedures are not followed correctly even the most watertight quality system will fail and we can get an idea of the relative nature of systems and the risks of interventions from uh, a graph I've put together so, if you look at the bottom of the graph, the smallest pink um, square, an isolator um, is the lowest risk, so it has the smallest risk factor. Then we have aseptic processing um, with no interventions. Then going up, we have aseptic processing, short fills, narrow neck vials. Then we have longer fills, then we have fills with wider necked bottles, and then we have interventions. So every intervention is the greatest risk to whatever the aseptic process is, no matter the nature of the operation. So it could be asked, well, what is the perfect intervention? The perfect intervention is no intervention whatsoever. And that's because there is no such thing as a safe intervention. And we can look at a quote from the FDA um, guidance. And this says that any intervention or stoppage during aseptic process can increase the risk of contamination. And the design of equipment in aseptic processing should try to limit the number and complexity of aseptic interventions by personnel. And to agree, we can assess the risk. And the standard way of doing risks, of looking at risks, is about the criticality of the occurrence or the severity versus the frequency of the occurrence. And we can measure frequency, but with aseptic processing, trying to assess the severity of the occurrence is very difficult. We can look at environmental monitoring, but environmental monitoring is only going to capture snapshots in times, and it does depend on various factors, whether the environmental monitoring will or will not pick up um, contamination. So we need to be mindful of the risk of airborne contamination and the risk of surface deposition. So we need to understand things like what height is the intervention taking place? How long will the intervention last for? What part of the filling machine was it taking place in? How long did it take? How complex was it? And so on. So they're all vital factors to take into consideration. But the key risk, the key risk is you. So we generate contamination even with the best designed clean room suits and the most careful and controlled movements. And the main risk by which we um, 
convey or transmit contamination or transfer contamination is via the air and this is enhanced by the situations when first air is compromised so hence that emphasis about first air at the beginning of the presentation. So when we um, have to carry out an intervention or consider whether we should or should not carry out an intervention um, you know, and we have to understand that in reality there may be some situations that are not fully covered by procedures and unexpected events occur which may require an immediate response. We do need to consider, so has it been done before? How long will it take? How many people are involved? And these are key decisions. And then we have to say, well, you know, if, it, if it's not routine, it's not been done before, and have we obtained authorization in advance, either from Sterility Assurance or from Microbiology 24-7, if Sterility Assurance are not available? And then we also need to consider in the process um, whether we can initiate line clearance. And that's not just vials, that's stoppers as well. And ideally, you want to do the line clearance before you do the intervention. But if you can't, you have to do it after the intervention. And if line clearance is not possible, then the intervention probably constitutes too great a risk. You also have to make sure that environmental monitoring is being undertaken when the intervention is taking place. So this is going to be the exposed soil plate, the running of the particle counter. But you also may want to run an active air sample as well. And also, how confident do you feel? If you don't feel confident, then again, it's a reason not to do the intervention. So it's also important to bear in mind that any unexpected intervention could easily result in batch rejection. And this isn't just a factor of whether there's any grade A contamination as detected by environmental monitoring. Because I said before, the environmental monitoring only represents a very small sample size relative to the air in the environment or the other activities that are taking place. And every intervention will be scrutinised by uh, video technology. And if it looks unsafe, then it's unsafe. And that could be a bigger risk. Um, so we do need to take that into account as well. So there's lots of complexities and uh, it's always, always, always important to be really careful when we're considering interventions. Okay, so this is the end of this presentation. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'm Tim Sandal and I'll be back with you with another video fairly soon. So, goodbye bye.